Chapter 27 of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville. A. W. Pollard edition. Chapter 27. Of the realm of Thas and the lands and kingdoms towards the septentrional parts in coming down from the land of Cathay. This land of Cathay is in Asia the deep, and after on this half is Asia the moor. The kingdom of Cathay marcheth toward the west unto the kingdom of Thas, the which was one of the kings that came to present our Lord in Bethlehem. And they that be of the lineage of that king are some Christian. In Thars they eat no flesh, nay they drink no wine. And on this half toward the west is the kingdom of Turkestan, that stretcheth him toward the west to the kingdom of Persia, and toward the septentrional to the kingdom of Khorasan. In the country of Turkestan be but few good cities, but the best city of that land hight Octora. There be great pastures, but few corns, and therefore the most part they be all herdsmen, and they lie in tents, and they drink a manna ale made of honey. And after, on this half, is the kingdom of Khorasan, that is a good land and a plenteous without wine. And it hath a desert toward the east, that lasteth more than a hundred journeys. And the best city of that country is clept Khorasan, and of that city beareth the country his name. The folk of that country be hardy warriors. And on this half is the kingdom of Comania, whereof the Comanians that dwelleth in Greece sometime were chased out. This is one of the greatest kingdoms of the world, but it is not all inhabited. For at one of the parts there is so great cold that no man may dwell there, and in another part there is so great heat that no man may endure it, and also there be so many flies that no man may know on what side he may turn him. In that country is but little arbory, nay trees that bear fruit, nay other. They lie in tents, and they burn the dung of beasts for default of wood. This kingdom descendeth on this half toward us, and toward Prussia, and toward Russia. And through that country runneth the river of Ethilo, that is one of the greatest rivers of the world. And it freezeth so strongly all years that many times men have fought upon the ice with great hosts, both parties on foot and their horses voided for the time, and what on horse and on foot, more than twenty thousand persons on every side. And between that river and the great sea ocean, they that cleap the sea more lie all these realms, and toward the head beneath in that realm is the Mount Kotas, that is the highest mount of the world, and it is between the sea Moor and the sea Caspian. There is full straight and dangerous passage for to go toward Ind, and therefore King Alexander let make there a strong city, that men cleap Alexandria, for to keep the country that no man should pass without his leave. And now men cleap that city, the gate of hell. And the principal city of Kamania is clept Sarek. That is one of the three ways for to go into Ind. But by that way, nay, may not pass no great multitude of people, but if it be in winter, and that passage men cleap the Derbent. The t'other way is for to go from the city of Turkestan by Persia, and by that way be many journeys by desert. 
And the third way is that cometh from Kamania, and then to go by the great sea and by the kingdom of Abkaz. And ye shall understand that all these kingdoms and all these lands above said unto Prussia and to Russia, Be all obeisant to the great Khan of Cathay and many other countries that march to other coasts. Wherefore his power and his lordship is full great and full mighty. End of chapter 27. Chapter 28 of the Travels of Sir John Mandeville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville. A. W. Pollard edition. Of the Emperor of Persia and of the Land of Darkness and of other kingdoms that belong to the great Chan of Cathay and other lands of his unto the Sea of Greece. Now, since I have devised you the lands and the kingdoms toward the parts septetronials in coming down from the land of Cathay unto the lands of the Christian towards Prussia and Russia, now shall I devise you of other lands and kingdoms coming down by other coasts toward the right side unto the Sea of Greece toward the land of Christian men. And therefore, that after Ind and after Cathay, the emperor of Persia is the greatest lord. Therefore, I shall tell you of the kingdom of Persia. First, where he hath two kingdoms, the first kingdom beginneth toward the east, toward the kingdom of Turkestan, and it stretcheth toward the west unto the river of Pison. That is one of the four rivers that come out of paradise. And on another side, it stretcheth toward the Septentrion, under the Sea of Caspian, and also toward the south unto the desert of Inn. And this country is good and plain and full of people, and there be many good cities, but the two principal cities be these, Boitura and Siornagan, that some men cleep Sormagan. The tother kingdom of Persia stretcheth toward the river of Pison, and the parts of the west unto the kingdom of Media, and from the great Armenia, and toward the Septentrion, to the city of Caspian, and toward the south to the land of Ind. That is also a good land, and a plenteous, and it hath three great principal cities, Mesabor, Saphon, and Sarmasan. And then after is Armenia, in the which were wont to be four kingdoms, that is a noble country and full of goods. And it beginneth at Persia, and stretcheth toward the west in length unto Turkey and in largeness it dureth to the city of Alexandria, that now is Cleep the gate of hell, that I spake of before under the kingdom of Media. In this Armenia be full many good cities, but Torizo is most of name. After this is the kingdom of Media, that is full long, but it is not full large, that beginneth toward the east to the land of Persia, and to end the less, and it stretcheth toward the west, toward the kingdom of Chaldea, and toward the Septentrion, descending toward the little Armenia. In that kingdom of Media there be many great hills and little of plain earth. There dwell Saracens, and another manner of folk, that men cleave Cordines. The best two cities of that kingdom be Saras and Karamen. After that is the kingdom of Georgia, that beginneth toward the east to the great mountain that is Cleep Abzor where that dwell many diverse folk of diverse nations, and men cleep the country Alamo. This kingdom stretcheth him towards Turkey and toward the great sea, and toward the south it marcheth to the great Armenia. And there be two kingdoms in that country, that one is the kingdom of Georgia, and that other is the kingdom of Abshaz. And always in that country be two kings, and they be both Christian. But the king of Georgia is in subjection to the great Chan, and the king of Abshaz hath the more strong country, and he always vigorously defendeth his country against all those that assail him, so that no man may make him in subjection to no man. In that kingdom of Abshaz is a great marvel, 
for a province of the country that hath well in circuit three journeys that men cleave hannison is all covered with darkness without any brightness or light so that no man may see nay hear nay no man dare enter into him and nathalies they of the country say that sometimes men hear voice of folk and horses neighing and cocks crowing and men wit well that men dwell there but they know not what men and they say that the darkness befell by miracle of god for a cursed emperor of persia that height sorus pursued all christian men to destroy them and to compel them to make sacrifice to his idols and rode with great host in all that ever be might for to confound the christian men and then in that country dwelled many good christian men the which that left their goods and would have fled into greece and when they were in a plain that hight megan anon this cursed emperor met with them with his host for to have slain them and hewn them to pieces and anon the christian men kneeled to the ground and made their prayers to god to succor them and anon a great thick cloud came and covered the emperor and all his host and so they endure in that manner that they nay may not go out on no side and so shall they evermore abide in that darkness till the day of doom by the miracle of god and then the christian men went where them liked best at their own pleasance without letting of any creature and their enemies enclosed and confounded in darkness without any stroke wherefore we may well say with david a domino factum est istu and est mirabile in oculus nostris and that was a great miracle that god made for them wherefore methinketh that christian men should be more devout to serve out lord god than any other men of any other sect for without any dread nay were not cursedness and sin of christian men they should be lords of all the world for the banner of jesu christ is always displayed and ready on all sides to the help of his true loving servants insomuch that one good christian man in good belief should overcome and outchase a thousand cursed misbelieving men as david saith in the psalter quonium persequabatur unus mils a duo fugarent de chem milia a cadent a latere tuo mile a decem milia a dextris tui and how that it might be that one should chase a thousand david himself saith following quia menus domini facet hec omnia and our lord himself saith by the prophet's mouth si in vias mes ambula veritas super tribulantes vos misisim manum miam so that we may see apertly that if we will be good men no enemy may not endure against us also ye shall understand that out of that land of darkness goeth out a great river that sheweth well that there be folk dwelling by many ready tokens but no man dare not enter into it and wit well that in the kingdoms of georgia of abshaz and of the little armenia be good christian men and devout for they shrive them and housle them evermore once or twice in the week and there be many of them that housle them every day and so do not we on this half albeit that saint paul commandeth it saying omnibus diubus dominici ad communicandum hortor they keep that commandment but we nay keep it not also after on this half is turkey that marcheth to the great armenia and there be many provinces as cappadocia sor brick Keseton, python and gameth and in every one of these be many good cities this turkey stretcheth unto the city of sachala that sitteth upon the sea of greece and so it marcheth to syria syria is a great country and a good as i have told you before and also it hath above toward end the kingdom of chaldea that stretcheth from the mountains of chaldea toward the east unto the city of nineveh that sitteth upon the river of tigris and in largeness it beginneth toward the north to the city of marga 
and it stretcheth toward the south unto the sea ocean in chaldea is a plain country and few hills and few rivers after is the kingdom of mesopotamia that beginneth toward the east to the flom of tigris unto a city that is Klep mosul and it stretcheth toward the west to the flom of euphrates unto a city that is Klep roeans and in length it goeth to the mount of armenia unto the desert of ind the less this is a good country and a plain but it hath few rivers it hath but two mountains in that country of the which one height simar and the other lysen and this land marcheth to the kingdom of chaldea yet there is toward the parts meridionals many countries and many regions as the land of ethiopia that marcheth toward the east to the great deserts toward the west to the kingdom of nubia toward the south to the kingdom of moratan and toward the north to the red sea after is moratan that dureth from the mountains of ethiopia unto libya the high and that country lieth along from the sea ocean toward the south and toward the north it marcheth to nubia and to the high libya these men of nubia be christian and it marcheth from the lands above said to the deserts of egypt and that is the egypt that i have spoken of before and after is libya the high and libya the low that descendeth down low toward the great sea of spain in the which country be many kingdoms and many diverse folk now i have devised you many countries on this half the kingdom of cathay of the which many be obeisant to the great chan end of chapter twenty eight Chapter 29 of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville. A. W. Pollard edition. Of the countries and isles that be beyond the land of Cathay, and of the fruits there, and of twenty-two kings enclosed within the mountains. Now shall I say you, suingly, of countries and isles that be beyond the countries that I have spoken of. Wherefore I say you, in passing by the land of Cathay, toward the high end, and toward Bacaria, men pass by a kingdom that men cleep, Kaldahi, that is a full fair country and there groweth a manner of fruit as though it were gourds and when they be ripe men cut them a two and men find within a little beast in flesh in bone and blood as though it were a little lamb without wool and men eat both the fruit and the beast and that is a great marvel of that fruit i have eaten although it were wonderful but that i know well that god is marvellous in his works and the Thelus I told them of as great a marvel to them, that is, among us, and that was of the Bernakis, for I told them in our country were trees that bear fruit that become birds flying, and those that fell in the water live, and they that fall on the earth die anon, and they be right good to man's meat, and hereof had they as great marvel that some of them trod it were an impossible thing to be in that country be long apples of good savour whereof be more than a hundred in a cluster and as many in another and they have great long leaves and large of two foot long or more and in that country and in other countries thereabout grow many trees that bear clove gylophrus and nutmegs and great nuts of ind and of cannel and of many other spices and there be vines that bear so great grapes that a strong man should have enough to do for to bear one cluster with all the grapes in the same region be the mountains of caspian that men cleep uber in the country between those mountains the jews of ten lineages be enclosed that men cleep goth and magoth and they may not go out on no side there were enclosed twenty-two kings with their people that dwelled between the mountains of Scythia. There King Alexander chased them between those mountains, and there he thought for to enclose them through work of his men. 
but when he saw that he might not do it nay bring it to an end he prayed to god of nature that he would perform that that he had begun and all were it so that he was a paynim and not worthy to be heard yet god of his grace closed the mountains together so that they dwell there all fast locked and enclosed with high mountains all about save only on one side and on that side is the sea of caspian now may some men ask since that the sea is on that one side wherefore go they not out on the seaside for to go where that them liketh but to this question i shall answer the sea of caspian goeth out by land under the mountains and runneth by the desert at one side of the country and after it stretcheth unto the ends of persia and although it be cleaped a sea it is no sea nay it toucheth none other sea but it is a lake the greatest of the world and though they would put them into that sea they no wist never where that they should arrive and also they can know language but only their own that no man knoweth but they and therefore may they not go out and also ye shall understand that the jews have no proper land of their own for to dwell in in all the world but only that land between the mountains and yet they yield tribute for that land to the queen of amazonia the which that maketh them to be kept in close full diligently that they shall not go out on no side but by the coast of their land for their land marcheth to those mountains and often it hath befallen that some of the jews have gone up the mountains and avail down to the valleys but great number of folk nay may not do so for the mountains be so high and so straight up that they must abide there maugre their might for they may not go out but by a little issue that was made by strength of men and it lasteth well a four great mile and after is there yet a land all desert where men may find no water neither for digging nay for none other thing wherefore men may not dwell in that place so is it full of dragons of serpents and of other venomous beasts that no man dare not pass but if it be strong winter and that straight passage men cleep in that country clyron and that is the passage that the queen of amazonia maketh to be kept and though it happen some of them by fortune to go out they can no manner of language but hebrew so that they cannot speak to the people and yet nephelus men say they shall go out in the time of antichrist and that they shall make great slaughter of christian men and therefore all the jews that dwell in all lands learn always to speak hebrew in hope that when the other jews shall go out that they may understand their speech and to lead them into christendom for to destroy the christian people for the jews say that they know well by their prophecies that they of caspia shall go out and spread throughout all the world and that the christian men shall be under their subjection as long as they have been in subjection of them and if that you will wit how that they shall find their way after that i have heard say i shall tell you in the time of antichrist a fox shall make there his train and mine a hole where king alexander let make the gates and so long he shall mine and pierce the earth till that he shall pass through towards that folk and when they see the fox they shall have great marvel of him because that they never saw such a beast for of all other beasts they have enclosed amongst them save only the fox and then they shall chase him and pursue him so straight till that he come to the same place that he came from and then they shall dig and mine so strongly till that they find the gates that king alexander let make of great stones and passing huge well cemented and made strong for the mastery and those gates they shall break and so go out by finding of that issue from that land go men toward the land of bakaria where be full evil folk and full cruel in that land be trees that bear wool as though it were of sheep whereof men make clothes and all things that may be made of wool in that country be many hippotanus that dwell some time in the water and some time on the land and they be half man and half horse as i have said before and they eat men when they may take them and there be rivers of waters that be full bitter three siths 
more than is the water of the sea in that country be many griffins more plenty than in any other country some men say that they have the body upward as an eagle and beneath as a lion and truly they say sooth that they be of that shape but one griffin hath the body more great and is more strong than eight lions of such lions as be on this half and more great and stronger than a hundred eagles such as we have amongst us for one griffin there will bear flying to his nest a great horse if he may find him at the point or two oxen yoked together as they go at the plough for he hath his talons so long and so large and great upon his feet as though they were horns of great oxen or of bugles or of kine so that men make cups of them to drink of and of their ribs and of the pens of their wings men make bows full strong to shoot with arrows and quarrels from thence go men by many journeys through the land of prester john the great emperor of ind and men cleep his realm the isle of pentexwar end of chapter twenty nine Chapter 30 of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville. A. W. Pollard edition. Chapter 30 of the royal estate of Prester John, and of a rich man that made a marvelous castle and clept it paradise, and of his subtlety. This emperor, Prester John, holds full great land, and has many full noble cities and good towns in his realm, and many great diverse isles and large. For all the country of India is devised in isles for the great floods that come from paradise, that depart all the land in many parts. And also in the sea he hath full many isles, and the best city in the isle of Pentexwar is Nyse, that is a full royal city, and a noble and full rich. This Prester John hath under him many kings, and many isles, and many diverse folk of diverse conditions. And this land is full good and rich, but not so rich as is the land of the great Chan. For the merchants come not thither so commonly for to buy merchandises as they do in the land of the great Chan, for it is too far to travel to. And on that other part, in the Isle of Cathay, Men find all manner thing that is need to man, cloths of gold, of silk, of spicery, and of all manner avoirdupois. And therefore, albeit that men have greater cheap in the Isle of Prester John, nevertheless men dread the long way and the great perils in the sea in those parts. For in many places of the sea be great rocks of stones of the adamant, that of his proper nature draweth iron to him, and therefore there pass no ships that have either bonds or nails of iron within them. And if there do, anon the rocks of the adamants draw them to them, that never they may go thence. I myself have seen afar in that sea, as though it had been a great isle, full of tree and buscale, full of thorns and briars, great plenty. And the shipmen told us, that all that was of ships that were drawn thither by the adamants, for the iron that was in them. And of the rottenness and other thing that was within the ships, grew such buscale and thorns and briars and green grass and such manner of thing. And of the masts and the sail-yards, it seemed a great wood or a grove. And such rocks be in many places thereabout. And therefore dare not the merchants pass there, but if they know well the passages, or else that they have good loadsmen. And also they dread the long way, and therefore they go to Cathay, for it is more nigh. And yet it is not so nigh, but that men must be traveling by sea and land eleven months or twelve from Genoa or from Venice, or he come to Cathay. And yet is the land of Prester John more far by many dreadful journeys. And the merchants pass by the kingdom of Persia, and go to a city that is clept Hermes, 
for Hermes the philosopher founded it. And after that, they pass an arm of the sea, and then they go to another city that is klept Gobashi. And there they find merchandises, and of popinjays as great plenty as men find here of geese. And if they will pass further, they may go sickerly enough. In that country is but little wheat or barley, and therefore they eat rice and honey and milk and cheese and fruit. This emperor, Prester John, taketh always to his wife the daughter of the great Chan, and the great Chan also, in the same wise, the daughter of Prester John. For these two be the greatest lords under the firmament. In the land of Prester John be many diverse things, and many precious stones, so great and so large that men make of them vessels, as platters, dishes, and cups. And many other marvels be there, that it were too cumbrous and too long to put it in scripture of books. But of the principal isles, and of his estate, and of his law, I shall tell you some part. This emperor, Prester John, is Christian, and a great part of his country also. But yet they have not all the articles of our faith as we have. They believe well in the Father, in the Son, and in the Holy Ghost, and they be full devout and right true one to another. And they set not by no barrets, nor by cautels, nor of no deceits. And he hath under him seventy-two provinces, and in every province is a king. And these kings have kings under them, and all be tributaries to Prester John. And he hath in his lordships many great marvels. For in his country is the sea that men cleat the gravelly sea, that is all gravel and sand, without any drop of water. And it ebbeth and floweth in great waves, as other seas do, and it is never still, nay in peace, in no manner season. And no man may pass that sea by navy, nor by no manner of craft, and therefore may no man know what land is beyond that sea. And albeit that it have no water, yet men find therein and on the banks full good fish of other manner of kind and shape than men find in any other sea, and they be of right good taste and delicious to man's meat. And a three journeys long from that sea be great mountains, out of the which goeth a great flood that cometh out of paradise, and it is full of precious stones without any drop of water, and it runneth through the desert on that one side, so that it maketh the sea gravelly, and it beareth into that sea, and there it endeth. And that flome runneth also three days in the week, and bringeth with him great stones, and the rocks also therewith, and that great plenty. And anon, as they be entered into the gravelly sea, they be seen no more, but lost for evermore. And in those three days that the river runneth, no man dare enter into it, but in the other days men dare enter well enough. Also beyond that flome, more upward to the deserts, is a great plain all gravelly, between the mountains. And in that plain, every day at the sun rising, begin to grow small trees, and they grow till midday, bearing fruit. But no man dare take of that fruit, for it is a thing of fairy. And after midday they decrease, and enter again into the earth, so that at the going down of the sun they appear no more. And so they do every day, and that is a great marvel. In that desert be many wild men that be hideous to look on, for they be horned, and they speak naught, but they grunt as pigs. And there is also great plenty of wild hounds, and there be many popinjays, that they cleat psitakis in their language, and they speak of their proper nature, and salute men that go through the deserts, and speak to them as eperly as though it were a man. And they that speak well have a large tongue, and have five toes upon a foot. And there be also of another manner, that have but three toes upon a foot, and they speak not, or but little, for they cannot but cry. This emperor, Prester John, when he goeth into battle against any other lord, he hath no banners borne before him, but he hath three crosses of gold, fine, great, and high, full of precious stones, and every of those crosses be set in a chariot, full richly arrayed. And for to keep every cross, 
be ordained ten thousand men of arms and more than one hundred thousand men on foot in manner as men would keep a standard in our countries when that we be in land of war and this number of folk is without the principal host and without wings ordained for the battle and when he hath no war but rideth with a privy many then he hath borne before him but one cross of tree without painting and without gold or silver or precious stones, in remembrance that Jesu Christ suffered death upon a cross of tree. And he hath borne before him also a platter of gold full of earth, in token that his noblesse and his might and his flesh shall turn to earth. And he hath borne before him also a vessel of silver, full of noble jewels of gold, full rich and of precious stones, in token of his lordship and of his noblesse, and of his might. He dwelleth commonly in the city of Susa, and there is his principal palace, that is so rich and so noble, that no man will trow it by estimation, but he had seen it. And above the chief tower of the palace be two round pommels of gold, and in every of them be two carbuncles, great and large, that shine full bright upon the night. And the principal gates of his palace be of precious stone, that men cleap sardonyx, and the border and the bars be of ivory. And the windows of the halls and chambers be of crystal, and the tables whereon men eat, some be of emeralds, some of amethyst, and some of gold, full of precious stones. And the pillars that bear up the tables be of the same precious stones, and the degrees to go up to his throne where he sitteth at the meat, one is of onyx, another is of crystal, and another of jasper green, another of amethyst, another of sardine, another of cornelian, and the seventh that he setteth on his feet is of chrysolite. And all these degrees be bordered with fine gold, with its other precious stones set with great pearls orient. And the sides of the siege of his throne be of emeralds, and bordered with gold full nobly, and dubbed with other precious stones and great pearls. And all the pillars in his chamber be of fine gold with precious stones, and with many carbuncles that give great light upon the night to all people. And albeit that the carbuncles give light right enough, natheless at all times burneth a vessel of crystal full of balm for to give good smell and odor to the emperor, and to void away all wicked airs and corruptions. And the form of his bed is of fine sapphires, bended with gold, for to make him sleep well, and to refrain him from lechery. For he will not lie with his wives, but four sides in the year, after the four seasons, and that is only for to engender children. He hath also a full fair palace and a noble, at the city of Nizam, where that he dwelleth, when him best liketh. But the air is not so a temper as it is at the city of Susa. And ye shall understand that in all his country, nor in the countries there all about, men eat not but once in the day, as they do in the court of the great Chan. And so they eat every day in his court more than thirty thousand persons, without goers and comers. But the thirty thousand persons of his country, now of the country of the great Chan, and they spend not so much good as do twelve thousand of our country. This emperor Prester John hath evermore seven kings with him to serve him, and they depart their service by certain months. And with these kings serve always seventy-two dukes and three hundred and sixty earls. And all the days of the year there eat in his household and in his court twelve archbishops and twenty bishops. And the Patriarch of St. Thomas is there, as is the Pope here. And the archbishops and the bishops and the abbots in that country be all kings. And every of these great lords know well enough the attendance of their service. The one is master of his household, another is his chamberlain, another serveth him of a dish, another of the cup, another is steward, another is marshal, another is prince of his arms, and thus he is full nobly and royally served. And his land dureth in very breadth four months' journeys, and in length out of measure, 
that is to say, all isles under earth that we suppose to be under us. Beside the Isle of Pentexhoir, that is the land of Prester John, is an eat isle, long and broad, that men cleat Mistorak, and it is in the lordship of Prester John. In that isle is great plenty of goods. There was dwelling sometime a rich man, and it is not long since, and men clept him Gathalanabes, and he was full of caudles and of subtle deceits, and he had a full fair castle and a strong in a mountain, so strong and so noble that no man could devise a fairer and a stronger, and he had let mirror all the mountain about with a strong wall and a fair, and within those walls he had the fairest garden that any man might behold. And therein were trees bearing all manner of fruits that any man could devise. And therein were also all manner virtuous herbs of good smell, and all other herbs also that bear fair flowers. And he had also in that garden many fair wells, and beside those wells he had let make fair halls and fair chambers, to paint it all with gold and azure. And there were in that place many diverse things, and many diverse stories, and of beasts and of birds that sung full delectably and moved by craft that it seemed that they were quick. And he had also in his garden all manner of fowls and of beasts that any man might think on, for to have play or sport to behold them. And he had also in that place the fairest damsels that might be found under the age of fifteen years, and the fairest young striplings that men might get of that same age, and all they were clothed in cloths of gold full richly, and he said that those were angels. And he had also let make three wells, fair and noble, and all environed with stone of jasper, of crystal, diapered with gold, and set with precious stones and great orient pearls. And he had made a conduit under earth, so that the three wells, at his list, one should run milk, another wine, and another honey. And that place he clept paradise. And when that any good knight, that was hardy and noble, came to see this royalty, he would lead him into his paradise, and show him these wonderful things to his disport and the marvelous and delicious song of diverse birds, and the fair damsels, and the fair wells of milk, of wine, and of honey, plenteously running. And he would let make diverse instruments of music to sound in a high tower, so merrily that it was joy for to hear, and no man should see the craft thereof. And those, he said, were angels of God, and that place was paradise, that God had behight to his friends, saying, Dabo vobis teram fluentem lacte et mele. And then would he make them to drink of certain drink, whereof anon they should be drunk. And then would them think greater delight than they had had before. And then would he say to them, that if they would die for him and for his love, that after their death they should come to his paradise, and they should be of the age of those damsels, and they should play with him, and yet be maidens. And after that yet should he put them in a fairer paradise, where that they should see God, of nature visibly, in his majesty and in his bliss. And then would he show them his intent, and say them that if they would go slay such a lord, or such a man that was his enemy, or contrarious to his list, that they should not dread to do it and for to be slain therefore themselves. For after their death he would put them into another paradise, there was an hundredfold fairer than any of the other, and there they should dwell with the most fairest damsels that might be, and play with them evermore. And thus went many diverse lusty bachelors for to slay great lords in diverse countries that were his enemies, and made themselves to be slain in hope to have that paradise. And thus, oftentime, he was revenged of his enemies by his subtle deceits and false cautels. And when the worthy men of the country had perceived the subtle falsehood of this Gathalanabes, they assembled them with force, and assailed his castle, and slew him, and destroyed all the fair places, and all the nobilities of that paradise. The place of the wells, and of the walls, and of many other things be yet apertly seen, but the riches is voided clean, and it is not long gone since that place was destroyed. 
End of chapter 30. Read by John R. Moore, Albertville, Alabama, December 2022. Chapter 31 of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville. A. W. Pollard edition. Chapter 31 of the devil's head in the valley perilous and of the customs of folk in diverse isles that be about in the lordship of prester john beside that isle of misterac upon the left side nigh to the river of pison is a marvellous thing there is a vale between the mountains that dureth nigh a four mile and some men cleep at the vale enchanted some cleep at the vale of devils and some cleep it the vale perilous in that vale hear men oftentime great tempests and thunders and great murmurs and noises all days and nights and great noise as it were sound of tabors and of nakers and of trumps as though it were of a great feast this vale is all full of devils and hath been always and men say there that it is one of the entries of hell in that vale is great plenty of gold and silver wherefore many misbelieving men and many christian men also go in oftentime for to have of the treasure that there is but few come again and namely of the misbelieving men ne of the christian men neither for anon they be strangled of devils and in mid place of that vale under a rock is an head and the visage of a devil bodily full horrible and dreadful to see and it showeth not but the head to the shoulders but there is no man in the world so hardy christian man ne other but that he would be a dread to behold it and that it would seem him to die for dread so is it hideous for to behold for he beholdeth every man so sharply with dreadful iron that be ever more moving and sparkling as fire and changeth and stirreth so often in diverse manner with so horrible countenance that no man dare not nigh and towards him and from him cometh out smoke and stinking fire and so much abomination that anneath no man may there endure but the good christian men that be stable in the faith enter well without peril for they will first shrive them and mark them with the token of the holy cross so that the fiends ne have no power over them but albeit that they be without peril, yet, natheless, ne be they not without dread, when that they see the devils visibly and bodily all about them, that make full many diverse assaults and menaces in air and in earth, and aghast them with strokes of thunder-blasts and of tempests, and the most dread is that God will take vengeance then of that that men have misdone against his will. And ye shall understand that when my fellows and I were in that vale, we were in great thought whether that we durst put our bodies in adventure to go in or not, in the protection of God. And some of our fellows accorded to enter, and some not. So there were with us two worthy men, friars minors, that were of Lombardy, that said that if any man would enter, they would go in with us. And when they had said so, upon the gracious trust of God and of them, we let sing mass and made every man to be shriven and houseled and then we entered fourteen persons but at our going out we were but nine and so we wist never whether that our fellows were lost or else turned again for dread but we saw them never after and those were two men of greece and three of spain and our other fellows that would not go in with us they went by another coast to be before us and so they were and thus we passed that perilous vale and found therein gold and silver and precious stones and rich jewels great plenty both here and there as us seemed but whether that it was as us seemed i wot never for i touched none because that the devils be so subtle to make a thing to seem otherwise than it is for to deceive mankind and therefore i touched none 
and also because that I would not be put out of my devotion, for I was more devout then than ever I was before or after, and all for the dread of fiends that I saw in diverse figures, and also for the great multitude of dead bodies that I saw there lying by the way, by all the veil, as though there had been a battle between two kings, and the mightiest of the country, and that the greater part had been discomfited and slain. And I trow that on Nethi should any country have so much people within him as lay slain in that vale as us thought, the which was an hideous sight to see. And I marveled much that there were so many, and the bodies all whole without rotting. But I trow that fiends made them seem to be so whole without rotting. But that might not be to mine advice that so many should have entered so newly, ne so many newly slain, without stinking and rotting. And many of them were in habit of Christian men, but I trow well that it were such that went in for covetous of the treasure that was there, and had overmuch feebleness in the faith, so that their hearts ne might not endure in the belief for dread, and therefore were we the more devout a great deal, and yet we were cast down and beaten down many times to the hard earth by winds and thunders and tempests. But evermore God of his grace hope us, and so we passed to that perilous veil, without peril and without encumbrance, thanked be Almighty God. After this, beyond the veil, is a great isle, where the folk be great giants of twenty-eight foot long, or of thirty foot long, and they have no clothing but of skins of beasts that they hang upon them. And they eat no bread, but all raw flesh and they drink milk of beasts, for they have plenty of all bestial. And they have no houses to lie in, and they eat more gladly men's flesh than any other flesh. Into that isle dare no man gladly enter, and if they see a ship and men therein, anon they enter into the sea for to take them. And men said us that in an isle beyond that were giants of greater stature, some of forty-five foot or fifty foot long, and, as some men say, some of fifty cubits long. But I saw none of those, for I had no lust to go to those parts, because that no man cometh neither into that isle nor into the other, but if he be devoured anon. And among those giants be sheep as great as oxen here, and they bear great wool and rough. Of the sheep I have seen many times, and men have seen many times, those giants take men in the sea out of their ships, and brought them to land, two in one hand and two in another, eating them going, all raw and all quick. Another isle is there toward the north, in the sea ocean, where that be full cruel and full evil women of nature, and they have precious stones in their iron, and they be of that kind, that if they behold any man with wrath, they slay him anon with the beholding, as doth the basilisk. Another isle is there, full fair and good and great, and full of people, where the custom is such that the first night that they be married, they make another man to lie by their wives for to have their maidenhead, and therefore they take great hire and great thank. And there be certain men in every town that serve of none other thing, and they cleep them cataberis, that is to say, the fools of Wanhope. For they of the country hold it so great a thing, and so perilous for to have the maidenhead of a woman, that them seemeth that they that have first the maidenhead putteth him in adventure of his life. And if the husband find his wife maiden that other next night, after that she should have been lain by of the man that is assigned therefore, peradventure for drunkenness or for some other cause, the husband shall plain upon him that he hath not done his devoir in such cruel wise as though the officers would have slain him. But after the first night that they be lain by, they keep them so straightly that they be not so hardly to speak with no man. And I asked them the cause why that they held such custom, and they said me that of old time men had been dead for deflowering of maidens, that had serpents in their bodies, that stung men upon their yards, that they died anon. And therefore they held the customs to make other men ordained therefore to lie by their wives for dread of death, and to assay the passage by another, rather than for to put them in that adventure. After that is another isle, where that women make great sorrow when their children be born. 
and when they die, they make a great feast and great joy and revel, and then they cast them into a great fire burning. And those that love well their husbands, if their husbands be dead, they cast them also into the fire with their children and burn them. And they say that the fire shall cleanse them of all filths and of all vices, and they shall go pure and clean into another world to their husbands, and they shall leave their children with them. And the cause why that they weep when the children be born is this, for when they come into this world, they come to labor, sorrow, and heaviness. And why they make joy and gladness at their dying is because that, as they say, then they go to paradise, where the rivers run milk and honey, where that men see them in joy and in abundance of goods, without sorrow and labor. In that isle, men make their king evermore by election and they need choose him not for no noblesse, nor for no riches, but such one as is of good manners and of good conditions, and therewithal rightful, and also that he be of great age, and that he have no children. In that isle men be full rightful, and they do rightful judgments in every cause, both of rich and poor, small and great, after the quantity of the trespass that is misdone. And the king may not doom no man to death without assent of his barons and other men wise of counsel, and that all the court accord thereto. And if the king himself do any homicide or any crime as to slay a man, or any such case, he shall die therefore. But he shall not be slain as another man. But men shall defend, in pain of death, that no man be so hardy to make him company, ne to speak with him, ne that no man give him, ne sell him, ne serve him, neither of meat, ne of drink, and so shall he die in mischief. They spare no man that hath trespassed, neither for love, ne for favor, ne for riches, ne for noblesse, but that he shall have after that he hath done. Beyond that isle is another isle where is great multitude of folk. And they will not, for no thing, eat flesh of hares, ne of hens, ne of geese, and yet they bring forth enough for to see them and to behold them only. But they eat flesh of all other beasts, and drink milk. In that country they take their daughters and their sisters to their wives, and their other kinswomen. And if there be ten men, or twelve men, or more dwelling in a house, the wife of every each of them shall be common to them all that dwell in that house, so that every man may lie with whom he will of them on one night, and with another another night. And if she have any child, she may give it to what man that she list, that hath companied with her, so that no man knoweth there whether the child be his or another's. And if any man say to them that they nourish other men's children, they answer that so do other men theirs. In that country, and by all India, be great plenty of cockadrills, that is a manner of a long serpent, as I have said before. And in the night they dwell in the water, and on the day upon the land, in rocks and in caves. And they eat no meat in all the winter, but they lie as in a dream, as do the serpents. These serpents slay men, and they eat them weeping, and when they eat, they move the overjaw, and not the nether jaw, and they have no tongue. In that country, and in many other beyond that, and also in many on this half, men put in work the seed of cotton, and they sow it every year. And then groweth it in small trees that bear cotton. And so do men every year, so that there is plenty of cotton at all times. Item in this isle, and in many other, there is a manner of wood, hard and strong. Whoso covereth the coals of that wood under the ashes thereof, the coals will dwell and abide all quick a year or more. And that tree hath many leaves, as the juniper hath. And there be also many trees that of nature they will never burn, ne rot in no manner. And there be nut trees that bear nuts as great as a man's head. There also be many beasts that be clept oriflis, in Arabia they be clept gerfons, that is a beast, pomely or spotted, that is but a little more high than is a steed, but he hath the neck a twenty cubits long, and his croup and his tail is as of an heart, and he may look over a great high house. 
and there be also in that country many camels. That is a little beast as a goat that is wild, and he liveth by the air, and eateth not, and he drinketh not at no time. And he changeth his color oftentime, for men see him often scythes now in one color, and now in another color. And he may change him into all manner colors that him lists, save only into red and white. There be also in that country passing great serpents, some of six score foot long, and they be of diverse colors, as red, red, green, and yellow, blue, and black, and all speckled. And there be others that have crests upon their heads, and they go upon their feet upright, and they be well a four fathom great or more, and they dwell always in rocks or in mountains, and they have always the throat open, of whence they drop venom always. And there be also wild swine of many colors, as great as be oxen in our country, and they be all spotted as be young fawns. And there be also urchins, as great as wild swine here. We cleat them ports de spine. And there be lions all white, great and mighty. And there be also of other beasts, as great and more greater than is a destroyer. And men cleat them lower ranks. And some men cleat them odenthos. And they have a black head and three long horns trenchant in the front sharp as a sword, and the body is slender, and he is a full felonious beast, and he chaseth and slayeth the elephant. There be also many other beasts, full wicked and cruel, that be not mickle more than a bear, and they have the head like a boar, and they have six feet, and on every foot two large claws, trenchant, and the body is like a bear, and the tail as a lion. And there be also mice as great as hounds, and yellow mice as great as ravens. And there be geese, all red, three sides more great than ours here. And they have the head, the neck, and the breast, all black. And many other diverse beasts be in those countries, and elsewhere thereabout. And many diverse birds also, of the which it were too long for to tell you. And therefore I pass over at this time. End of chapter 31, read by John R. Moore, Albertville, Alabama, December 2022. Chapter 32 of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville A. W. Pollard Edition Chapter 32 Of the Goodness of the Folk of the Isle of Bragman Of King Alexander And Wherefore the Emperor of India is clept Prester John And beyond that isle is another isle great and good and plenteous, where that be good folk and true, and of good living after their belief, and of good faith. And albeit that they be not christened, nay have no perfect law, yet, natheless, of kindly law they be full of all virtue, and they eschew all vices and all malices and all sins. For they be not proud, ne covetous, ne envious, ne wrathful, ne gluttons, ne lecherous, ne they do to any man otherwise than they would that other men did to them, and in this point they fulfill the Ten Commandments of God, and give no charge of avoir, ne of riches. And they lie not, ne they swear, not for none occasion, but they say simply, yea and a nay. For they say, he that sweareth will deceive his neighbor, and therefore all that they do, they do it without oath. And men cleep that isle, the isle of Bragman, and some men cleep it the land of faith. And through that land runneth a great river that is cleped Thebe. And in general, all the men of those isles, and of all the marches thereabout, be more true than in any other countries thereabout, and more rightful than others in all things. In that isle is no thief, ne murderer, ne common woman, ne poor beggar, ne never was man slain in that country. And they be so chaste, and lead so good life, as that they were religious men, 
and they fast all days. And because they be so true, and so rightful, and so full of all good conditions, they were never grieved with tempests, ne with thunder, ne with light, ne with hail, ne with pestilence, ne with war, ne with hunger, ne with none other tribulation, as we be many times amongst us for our sins. Wherefore it seemeth well, that God loveth them, and is pleased with their crayons for their good deeds. They believe well in God that made all things, and him they worship. And they prize none earthly riches, and so they be all rightful. And they live full ordinately, and so soberly in meat and drink, that they live right long, and the most part of them die without sickness, when nature faileth them for eld. And it befell in King Alexander's time that he purposed him to conquer that isle and to make them to hold of him. And when they of the country heard it, they sent messengers to him with letters that said thus, What may be enough to that man to whom all the world is insufficient? Thou shalt find nothing in us that may cause thee to war against us. For we have no riches, ne none we covet, and all the goods of our country be in common. Our meat that we sustain with all our bodies is our riches, and instead of treasure of gold and silver, we make our treasure of accord and peace, and for to love every man other. And for to apparel with our bodies, we use a silly little clout for to wrap in our carrion. Our wives need be not arrayed for to make no man pleasant, but only convenable array for to eschew folly. When men pain them to array the body for to make it seem fairer than God made it, they do great sin. For man should not devise ne ask greater beauty than God hath ordained man to be at his birth. The earth ministereth to us two things, our livelihood that cometh of the earth that we live by, and our sepulture after our death. We have been in perpetual peace till now that thou come to disinherit us. And also we have a king, not only for to do justice to every man, for he shall find no forfeit among us, but for to keep noblesse, and for to show that we be obeisant, we have a king. For justice ne hath not among us no place, for we do to no man otherwise than we desire that men do to us. So that righteousness ne vengeance hath naught to do among us, so that nothing thou may take from us but our good peace, that always hath dured among us. And when King Alexander had read these letters, he thought that he should do great sin for to trouble them. And then he sent them sureties, that they should not be afeard of him, and that they should keep their good manners and their good peace, as they had used before of custom, and so he let them alone. Another isle there is, that men cleave oxidrate, and another isle, that men cleave ganosophy, where there is also good folk, and full of good faith, and they hold for the most part the good conditions and customs and good manners as men of the country above said, but they go all naked. Into that isle entered King Alexander to see the manor, and when he saw their great faith, and their truth that was amongst them, he said that he would not grieve them, and bade them ask of him what they would have of him, riches or anything else, and they should have it with good will. And they answered, that he was rich enough that had meat and drink to sustain the body with, for the riches of this world that is transitory is not worth. But if it were in his power to make them immortal, thereof would they pray him and thank him. And Alexander answered them that it was not in his power to do it, because he was mortal as they were. And then they asked him why he was so proud and so fierce, and so busy for to put all the world under his subjection, right as thou were a god, and hast no term of this life, neither day nor hour, and willest to have all the world at thy commandment, that shall leave thee without fail, or thou leave it. And right as it hath been to other men before thee, right so it shall be to other after thee. And from hence shalt thou bear nothing. But as thou were born naked, Right so, all naked shall thy body be turned into earth that thou were made of. Wherefore thou shouldst think and impress it in thy mind that nothing is immortal, but only God, that made the thing. By the which answer Alexander was greatly astonished, and abashed, and all confused, and departed from them.
And albeit that these folk have not the articles of our faith as we have, nevertheless, for their good faith natural, and for their good intent, I trow fully, that God loveth them, and that God take their service to grie, right as he did of Job, that was a pain him, and held him for his true servant. And therefore, albeit that there be many diverse laws in the world, yet I trow that God loveth always them that love him, and serve him meekly in truth, and namely them that despise the vain glory of this world, as this folk do, and as Job did also. And therefore said our Lord by the mouth of Hosea the prophet, Ponem eis multiplicis leges meas, and also in another place, Qui totum orbem subdit suis legibus. And also our Lord saith in the gospel, Alias oves habio, que non sunt ex hoc ovili. That is to say, that he had other servants than those that be under Christian law. And to that accordeth the avision that St. Peter saw at Jaffa, how the angel came from heaven, and brought before him diverse beasts, as serpents and other creeping beasts of the earth, and of other also great plenty, and bade him take and eat. And St. Peter answered, I eat never, quoth he, of unclean beasts. And then said the angel, Non dicas immunda qui deus mundavit. And that was in token that no man should have in despite none earthly man for their diverse laws, for we know not whom God loveth, nay whom God hateth. And for that example, when men say de profundis, they say it in common and in general with the Christian, pro animabus omnium defunctorum pro quibus sit orandum. And therefore say I of this folk, that be so true and so faithful, that God loveth them. For he hath amongst them many of the prophets, and always hath had. And in those isles they prophesied the incarnation of Lord Jesu Christ, how he should be born of a maiden, three thousand year or more, or our Lord was born of the Virgin Mary. And they believe well it, the incarnation, and that full perfectly, but they know not the manner how he suffered his passion and death for us. And beyond these isles there is another isle that is cleft Python. The folk of that country ne till not, ne labor not the earth, for they eat no manner thing, and they be of good color and of fair shape after their greatness, but the small be as dwarfs, but not so little as be the pygmies. These men live by the smell of wild apples, and when they go any far away they bear the apples with them, for if they had lost the savor of the apples they should die anon. They may be not full reasonable, but they be simple and bestial. After that is another isle, where the folk be all skinned rough hair, as a rough beast, save only the face and the palm of the hand. These folk go as well under the water of the sea as they do above the land all dry, and they eat both flesh and fish all raw. In this isle is a great river that is well a two mile and a half of breadth that is cleft Bomari. And from that river of fifteen journeys in length, going by the deserts of the t'other side of the river, whoso might go it, for I was not there, but it was told us of them of the country, that within those deserts were the trees of the sun and of the moon, that spake to King Alexander, and warned him of his death. And men say that the folk that keep those trees, and eat of the fruit and of the balm that groweth there, live well four hundred year or five hundred year, by virtue of the fruit and of the balm. For men say that balm groweth there in great plenty, and nowhere else, save only at Babylon, as I have told you before. We would have gone toward the trees full gladly if we had might, but I trow that one hundred thousand men of arms might not pass those deserts safely, for the great multitude of wild beasts, and of great dragons, and of great serpents that there be, that slay and devour all that come anent them. In that country be many white elephants without number, and of unicorns, and of lions of many manners, and many of such beasts that I have told before, and of many other hideous beasts without number. 
Many other isles there be in the land of Prester John, and many great marvels that were too long to tell all, both of his riches and of his noblesse, and of the great plenty also of precious stones that he hath. I trow that ye know well enough, and have heard say, wherefore this emperor is clept Prester John, but nevertheless for them that know not, I shall say you the cause. It was some time an emperor there that was a worthy and a full noble prince that had Christian knights in his company, as he hath that is now. So it befell that he had great list for to see the service in the church among Christian men, and then dured Christendom beyond the sea, all Turkey, Syria, Tartary, Jerusalem, Palestine, Arabia, Aleppo, and all the land of Egypt. And so it befell that this emperor came with a Christian knight with him into a church in Egypt. And it was the Saturday in Whitsun week, and the bishop made orders. And he beheld and listened the service full tentatively. And he asked the Christian knight what men of degree they should be that the prelate had before him. And the knight answered and said that they should be priests. And then the emperor said that he would no longer be clept king, nay emperor, but priest, and that he would have the name of the first priest that went out of the church, and his name was John. And so evermore Scythians he is clept Prester John. In his land be many Christian men of good faith and of good law, and namely of them of the same country, and have commonly their priests that sing the mass, and make the sacrament of the altar, of bread, right as the Greeks do. But they say not so many things at the Mass as men do here. For they say not, but only that that the apostles said, as our Lord taught them, right as St. Peter and St. Thomas and the other apostles sung the Mass, saying the Pater Noster and the words of the sacrament. But we have many more additions that diverse popes have made that they nay know not of. End of chapter 32, read by John R. Moore, Albertville, Alabama, December 2022. Chapter 33 of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville A. W. Pollard Edition Chapter 33 Of the Hills of Gold that Pismires Keep And of the Four Floods that Come from Paradise Terrestrial Toward the east part of Prester John's land is an isle good and great that men cleep taprobane, that is full noble and full fructuous. And the king thereof is full rich, and is under the obeisance of Prester John, and always there they make their king by election. In that isle be two summers and two winters, and men harvest the corn twice a year, and in all the seasons of the year be the gardens flourished. There dwell good folk and reasonable, and many Christian men amongst them, that be so rich that they wit not what to do with their goods. Of old time, when men passed from the land of Prester John unto that isle, men made ordinance for to pass by ship twenty-three days or more. But now men pass by ship in seven days. And men may see the bottom of the sea in many places, for it is not full deep. Beside that isle, toward the east, be two other isles, and men cleep that one oral, and that other argite of which all the land is mine of gold and silver. And those isles be right where that the Red Sea departeth from the sea ocean. And in those isles men see there no stars so clearly as in other places, for there appear no stars, but only one clear star that men cleep canopus. And there is not the moon seen in all the lunation, save only the second quarter. In the isle also of this taprobane be great hills of gold, that pismires keep full diligently. And they find the purid gold, and cast away the unpurid, and these pismires be great as hounds, 
so that no man dare come to those hills, for the Pismires would assail them, and devour them anon, so that no man may get of that gold, but by great slight. And therefore, when it is great heat, the Pismires rest them in the earth, from prime of the day into noon. And then the folk of the country take camels, dromedaries, and horses, and other beasts, and go thither, and charge them in all haste that they may. And after that they flee away in all haste that the beasts may go, or the Pismires come out of the earth. And in other times, when it is not so hot, and that the Pismires may rest them not in the earth, then they get gold by this subtlety. They take mares that have young colts, or foals, and lay upon the mares void vessels made therefore, and they be all open above, and hanging low to the earth. And then they send forth those mares for to pasture about those hills, and withhold the folds with them at home. And when the Pismires see those vessels, they leap in anon, and they have this kind that they let nothing be empty among them, but anon they fill it, be it what manner of thing that it be, and so they fill those vessels with gold. And when that the folk suppose that the vessels be full, they put forth anon the young folds, and make them to neigh after their dams. And then anon the mares return toward their folds with their charges of gold, and then men discharges them, and get gold enough by this subtlety. For the Pismires will suffer beasts to go and pasture amongst them, but no man in no wise. And beyond the land and the isles and the deserts of Prester John's lordship, in going straight toward the east, men find nothing but mountains and rocks, full great. And there is the dark region, where no man may see, neither by day nor by night, as they of the country say. And that desert and that place of darkness dure from this coast unto paradise terrestrial, where that Adam, our foremost father, and Eve were put, that dwelled there but little while, and that is towards the east at the beginning of the earth. But that is not that east that we cleave our east on this half, where the sun riseth to us. For when the sun is east in those parts towards paradise terrestrial, it is then midnight in our parts on this half, for the roundness of the earth, of the which I have touched to you of before. For our Lord God made the earth all round in the mid-place of the firmament, and there as mountains and hills be, and valleys, that is not but only of Noah's flood, that wasted the soft ground and the tender, and fell down into valleys, and the hard earth and the rocks abide mountains, when the soft earth and tender waxed nesh through the water, and fell and became valleys. Of paradise nay can I not speak properly, for I was not there. It is far beyond, and that forethinketh me and also I was not worthy. But as I have heard say of wise men beyond, I shall tell you with good will. Paradise terrestrial, as wise men say, is the highest place of earth that is in all the world. And it is so high that it toucheth nigh to the circle of the moon, there as the moon maketh her turn. For she is so high that the flood of Noah nay might not come to her that would have covered all the earth of the world all about, and above, and beneath, save paradise only alone. And this paradise is enclosed all about with a wall, and men wit not whereof it is, for the walls be covered all over with moss, as it seemeth. And it seemeth not that the wall is stone of nature, nay of none other thing that the wall is. And that wall stretcheth from the south to the north, and it hath not but one entry, that is closed with fire, burning, so that no man that is mortal may dare not enter. And in the most high place of paradise, even in the middle place, is a well that casteth out the four floods that run by diverse lands, of the which the first is clept Pison, or Ganges, that is all one. And it runneth through India, or Emlak, in the which river be many precious stones, and much of lignum aloes, and much gravel of gold. And that other river is clept Nilus, or Gison, that goeth by Ethiopia, and after by Egypt. And that other is clept Tigris, that runneth by Assyria, and by Armenia the Great. And that other is clept Euphrates, that runneth also by Media, and Armenia, and by Persia. And men there beyond say, 
that all the sweet waters of the world above and beneath take their beginning of the well of paradise, and out of that well all waters come and go. The first rivers cleft Pison, that is to say in their language, assembly, for many other rivers meet them there and go into that river. And some men cleap at Ganges, for a king that was in India, that hight Gangeres, and that it ran throughout his land. And that water is in some place clear, and in some place troubled, in some place hot, and in some place cold. The second river is clept Nilus, or Gison, for it is always trouble, and Gison, in the language of Ethiopia, is to say trouble, and in the language of Egypt also. The third river, that is clept Tigris, is as much for to say as fast running for he runneth more fast than any of the t'other, and also there is a beast that is clept Tigris that is fast running. The fourth river is clept Euphrates, that is to say, well-bearing, for there grow many goods upon that river, as corns, fruits, and other goods enough plenty. And ye shall understand that no man that is mortal they may not approach to that paradise. For by land no man may go, for wild beasts that be in the deserts, and for the high mountains, and great huge rocks that no man may pass by, for the dark places that be there, and that many. And by the rivers may no man go, for the water runneth so rudely and so sharply, because that it cometh down so outrageously from the high places above, that it runneth in so great waves that no ship may not row nay sail against it and the water roareth so, and maketh so huge noise, and so great tempest, that no man may hear other in the ship, though he cried with all the craft that he could, in the highest voice that he might. Many great lords have assayed with great will, many times, for to pass by those rivers towards paradise, with full great companies. But they might not speed in their voyage, and many died for weariness of rowing against those strong waves and many of them became blind, and many deaf for the noise of the water. And some were perished and lost within the waves, so that no mortal man may approach to that place without special grace of God, so that of that place I can say you no more. And therefore I shall hold me still, and return to that that I have seen. End of section 33, read by John R. Moore, Albertville, Alabama. February 2023
that when a man goeth out of one city, men see another city even before them. And that is what part that a man go in all that country. In that isle is great plenty of all goods for to live with, and all manner of spices. And there be great forests of chestnuts. The king of that isle is full rich and full mighty, and, natheless, he holds his land of the great Chan, and is obeisant to him. For it is one of the twelve provinces that the great Chan hath under him, without his proper land, and without other less isles that he hath, for he hath full many. From that kingdom come men, in returning, to another isle that is clept Ribothi, and it is also under the great Chan. That is a full good country, and full plenteous of all goods, and of wines, and fruit, and all other riches. And the folk of that country have no houses, but they dwell and lie all under tents, made of black fern, by all the country. And the principal city, and the most royal, is all walled with black stone and white, and all the streets also be pathed of the same stones. In that city is no man so hardy to shed blood of any man, nay of no beast, for the reverence of an idol that is worshipped there. And in that isle dwelleth the Pope of their law, that they cleep Lobasi. This Lobasi giveth all the benefices, and all other dignities, and all other things that belong to the idol. And all those that hold anything of their churches, religious and other, obey to him, as men do here to the Pope of Rome. In that isle they have a custom by all the country, that when the father is dead of any man, and the son list to do great worship to his father, he sendeth to all his friends, and to all his kin, and for religious men and priests, and for minstrels also, great plenty. And then men bear the dead body unto a great hill, with great joy and solemnity. And when they have brought it thither, the chief prelate smiteth off the head, and layeth it upon a great platter of gold and of silver, if so he be a rich man. And then he taketh the head to the sun, and then the sun and his other kin sing and say many orisons. And then the priests and the religious men smite all the body of the dead man in pieces, and then they say certain orisons. And the fowls of ravine of all the country about know the custom of long time before, and come flying above in the air as eagles, bleeds, ravens, and other fowls of ravine that eat flesh. And then the priests cast the gobbets of the flesh, and then the fowls, each of them, taketh that he may, and goeth a little thence, and eateth it. And so they do whilst any peace lasteth of the dead body. And after that, as priests amongst us sing for the dead, Subinite Sancti Dei, etc., Right so the priests sing with high voice in their language. Behold how so worthy a man and how good a man this was, that the angels of God come for to seek him and for to bring him into paradise. And then seemeth it to the sun that he is highly worshipped, when that many birds and fowls and ravens come and eat his father, and he that hath most number of fowls is most worshipped. And then the son bringeth home with him all his kin, and his friends, and all the others to his house, and maketh them a great feast. And then all his friends make their vaunt and their dalliance, how the fowls came thither, here five, here six, here ten, and there twenty, and so forth, and they rejoice them hugely for to speak thereof. And when they be at meat, the son let bring forth the head of his father, and thereof he giveth of the flesh to his most special friends, instead of entremas or a sukark. And of the brain pan he letteth make a cup, and thereof drinketh he and his other friends also with great devotion, in remembrance of the holy man that the angels of God have eaten. And that cup the son shall keep to drink of all his lifetime, in remembrance of his father. From that land, in returning by ten journeys throughout the land of the great Chan, is another good isle and a great kingdom, where the king is full rich and mighty. And amongst the rich men of his country is a passing rich man that is no prince, nay duke, nay earl, but he hath more that hold of him lands and other lordships, for he is more rich. For he hath every year of annual rent three hundred thousand horses, charged with corn of diverse grains and of rice. 
and so he leadeth a full, noble life, and a delicate, after the custom of the country. For he hath, every day, fifty fair damsels, all maidens, that serve him evermore at his meat, and for to lie by him a night, and for to do with them that is his pleasance. And when he is at table, they bring him his meat at every time, five and five together, and in bringing their service they sing a song. And after that they cut his meat, and put it in his mouth, for he toucheth nothing, ne handleth naught, but holdeth evermore his hands before him upon the table. For he hath so long nails, that he may take nothing, ne handle nothing. For the noblesse of that country is to have long nails, and to make them grow always to be as long as men may. And there be many in that country that have their nails so long that they environ all the hand, and that is a great noblesse. And the noblesse of the women is for to have small feet and little. And therefore anon as they be born, they let bind their feet so straight that they may not grow half as nature would. And this is the noblesse of the women there, to have small feet and little. And always these damsels that I spake of before sing all the time that this rich man eateth. And when that he eateth no more of his first course, then other five and five of fair damsels bring him a second course, always singing as they did before. And so they do continually every day to the end of his meat. And in this manner he leadeth his life. And so did they before him that were his ancestors. And so shall they that come after him, without doing of any deeds of arms, but live evermore thus in ease, as a swine that is fed in sty for to be made fat. He hath a full fair palace, and full rich, where that he dwelleth in, of the which the walls be in circuit two mile. And he hath within many fair gardens, and many fair halls and chambers, and the pavement of his halls and chambers be of gold and silver. And in the mid-place of one of his gardens is a little mountain, where there is a little meadow, and in that meadow is a little tootill, with towers and pinnacles, all of gold. And in that little tutu will he sit oftentime, for to take the air and to disport him. For the place is made for nothing else, but only for his disport. From that country men come by the land of the great Chan also, that I have spoken of before. And ye shall understand that of all these countries, and of all these isles, and of all the diverse folk that I have spoken of before, and of diverse laws, and of diverse beliefs that they have, Yet there is none of them all, but that they have some reason within them and understanding, but if it be the fewer, and that have certain articles of our faith and some good points of our belief, and that they believe in God, that formed all things and made the world, and cleep him God of nature, after that the prophet saith, Admetuant eum omnes fines terrae, and also in another place, Omnes gentes servient a that is to say, all folk shall serve him. But yet they cannot speak perfectly, for there is no man to teach them, but only that they can devise by their natural wit, for they have no knowledge of the Son, nay of the Holy Ghost. But they can all speak of the Bible, and namely of Genesis, of the prophets' saws, and of the books of Moses. And they say, well, that the creatures that they worship may be no gods, but they worship them for the virtue that is in them, that may not be, but only by the grace of God. And of simulacres and of idols, they say, that there be no folk, but that they have simulacres. And that, they say, for we Christian men have images, as of Our Lady and of other saints that we worship, not the images of tree or of stone, but the saints in whose name they be made after. For right as the books and the scripture of them teach the clerks how and in what manner they shall believe, right so the images and the paintings teach the lewd folk to worship the saints and to have them in their mind, in whose names that the images be made after. They say also that the angels of God speak to them in those idols, and that they do many great miracles. And they say sooth that there is an angel within them. For there be two manner of angels, a good and an evil, as the Greeks say, kacho and kalo. This kacho is the wicked angel, and kalo is the good angel. But the t'other is not the good angel, but the wicked angel that is within the idols to deceive them, and for to maintain them in their error. 
There be many other diverse countries, and many other marvels beyond, that I have not seen. Wherefore, of them I cannot speak properly to tell you the manner of them. And also in the countries where I have been, be many more diversities of many wonderful things than I make mention of, for it were too long thing to devise you the manner. And therefore, that that I have devised you of certain countries, that I have spoken of before, I beseech your worthy and excellent noblesse that it suffice to you at this time. For if that I devised you all that is beyond the sea, another man peradventure that would pain him and travail his body for to go into those marches, for to ensearch those countries, might be blamed by my words in rehearsing many strange things. For he might not say nothing of new, in the which the hearers might have either solace, or disport, or lust, or liking in the hearing. For men say always that new things and new tidings be pleasant to hear. Wherefore I will hold me still, without any more rehearsing of diversities or of marvels that be beyond, to that intent and end, that whoso will go into those countries, he shall find enough to speak of that I have not touched of in no wise. And ye shall understand, if it like you, that at mine homecoming I came to Rome, and showed my life to our Holy Father the Pope, and was assoiled of all that lay in my conscience, of many a diverse grievous point, as men must needs that be in company, dwelling amongst so many a diverse folk, of diverse sect and of belief, as I have been. And amongst all I showed him this treatise, that I had made after information of men that knew of things that I had not seen myself, and also of marvels and customs that I had seen myself, as far as God would give me grace, and besought his holy fatherhood that my book might be examined and corrected by advice of his wise and discreet counsel. And our Holy Father, of his special grace, remitted my book to be examined, and proved by the advice of his said counsel. By the which my book was proved for true, insomuch that they showed me a book that my book was examined by, that comprehended full much more by an hundred part, by the which the Mappa Mundi was made after. And so my book, albeit that many men may list not to give credence to nothing but to that that they see with their eye, they be the author and they the person never so true, is affirmed and proved by our Holy Father, in manner and form, as I have said. And I, John Mandeville, knight, above said, although I be unworthy, that departed from our countries and passed the sea, the year of grace a thousand three hundred and twenty-two, that have passed many lands and many isles and countries, and searched many full strange places, and have been in many a full good honorable company, and at many a fair deed of arms, albeit that I did none myself, for mine unable insufficence, now I am come home, maugre myself, to rest, for gouts are to tykes that me distrain, that define the end of my labor against my will, God knoweth. And thus, taking solace in my wretched rest, recording the time past, I have fulfilled these things, and put them written in this book, as it would come into my mind, the year of grace a thousand three hundred and fifty-six, in the thirty-fourth year that I departed from our countries. Wherefore, I pray to all the readers and hearers of this book, if it please them, that they would pray to God for me, and I shall pray for them. And all those that say for me a paternoster, with an Ave Maria, that God forgive me my sins, I make them partners and grant them part of all the good pilgrimages and of all the good deeds that I have done, if any be to his pleasance, and not only of those, but of all that ever I shall do unto my life's end. And I beseech Almighty God, from whom all goodness and grace cometh from, that he vouchsafe of his excellent mercy and abundant grace to fulfill their souls with inspiration of the Holy Ghost, in making defense of all their ghostly enemies here in earth to their salvation both of body and soul, to worship and thinking of him that is three in one, without beginning and without ending, that is without quality, good, without quantity, great, that in all places is present and all things containing, the which that no goodness may amend, nay none evil impair, 
that in perfect trinity liveth and reigneth God by all worlds and by all times. Amen, amen, amen. End of section 34. Read by John R. Moore, Albertville, Alabama, February 2023. End of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville by John Mandeville. A. W. Pollard Edition.